Hey there guys, this is Cole here and I want to welcome you guys back to another movie review. And for the horror month of October, uh, if I don't get around to more reviews, I wanted to knock at least this review out of the way. And that is for my favorite horror film of all time, as well as, well, not my favorite Stephen King movie, because my favorite Stephen King movie is The Shawshank Redemption, which I need to do a review on that movie someday, but... But I'm going to talk about The Shining, you know, uh, such a great, well-known, iconic movie. Like, The Shining is such a well-known movie, even for the people who haven't seen it. Like, and even if you don't watch horror movies, like, you know The Shining, like, you've heard the name. Like, that's how well, that is how well-known of an iconic movie The Shining is. The Shining is so well-known that even for people who haven't seen it, like, you know what The Shining is, so... Yeah, that's how iconic this movie is, and it's one of my favorite, it's my favorite horror film as well as one of my favorite films. Uh, I know most people think this is the best Stanley Kubrick movie, and I do like it. Uh, it's not my favorite Stanley Kubrick movie. I would say I prefer Full Metal Jacket just slightly over this, but this is still a classic. It's still a movie where I would still, re if people are into horror movies and haven't seen it, I would recommend this movie to people who haven't seen it, and, uh, especially since it's October, you know, stuff like that, and, um, yeah, I just wanted to knock this review out the way, and, uh, before we get into the review itself, I want to talk about this movie, some of its background history, and how influential this movie has been. Now, at the time it came out in 1980, the reviews were mixed. Uh, Stephen King didn't like it because it wasn't like his book. And, however, however, as soon over the years, like over the decades, like just a year after The Shining came out, just like just about two years after The Shining came out, the movie got a great reputation. You know, you know, forty, yeah, forty two years later, The Shining is considered one of the best, if not the best, horror film of all time. Like The Shining, it's considered one of the best, if not the best, horror film ever made. And, you know, I can't really argue with that statement. And um and yes, this is a great movie. The movie got a, like this movie got a bunch of yeah, the movie it it got a bunch of critical acclaim and people still talk about it to this day. 42 years later, yeah, that's how influential this movie has been, um, years ago, I, I still like him, but in 2017, 2018-ish, just when I started getting into Stephen King movies and books, and, uh, I watched, uh, The Shining in 2018, and I really liked it, and I still do, but, uh, yeah, and, uh, the, not only that, The Shining is so influential that back in 2013, Stephen King wrote a novel that actually was implied as a sequel to The Shining called Doctor Sleep, which has Danny, the kid in this movie, grown up as an adult decades later with a kid of his own, and uh, which was made into a 2019 movie. And I gotta say, I, I thought Doctor Sleep, I thought it was a great movie. It was Yes, it wasn't as good as The Shining, but it was a good follow-up. And The Shining's so famous that they even made a documentary about it. Back in 2013, a documentary was made about it called Room 237, uh, which was based on the room number in the movie, but, you know, a documentary on how the movie was made, which, believe it or not, I actually still haven't seen that documentary yet. I, I gotta check out, like, I have to check out that documentary at some point. I haven't seen, but, you know, I would like to check out the documentary at some point, and, um... Like I said, I do own the movie on DVD. I'm, I just don't have it out right now because, you know, we're packing up this house and, you know, uh, the whole background here. Uh, yeah, but in two days. But I wanted to get one more review out before I, you know, before we leave this house. And uh, but yeah, uh, enough chit chat. Let's get into the actual review. So what's the plot in the story? So the plot in the story Jack Torrance, played by Jack Nicholson, becomes winter caretaker at the isolated Overlook Hotel in Colorado, hoping to cure his writer's block. He settles along with his wife, Wendy, played by Shelley Duvall, and his son, Danny, which I can't think of the actor who plays uh, Danny Lloyd, I think is the actor's name, uh, Danny Torrance in the movie, but I think uh, the actor's name is is Danny Lloyd. I, I could be wrong on that, but yeah, um... 
as Jack's writing goes nowhere and Danny's visions become more disturbing, Jack discovers the hotel's dark secrets and begin to unravel into a homicidal maniac hell-bent on terrorizing his family. And that's the plot of the movie and the execution's perfect. I love this movie. This movie's a masterpiece. Um, So, uh, yeah, let's get into the actual review. So, the movie starts off with the iconic music. No, 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 no. I'm doing a horrible job at it, but, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's in the Colorado Springs. Uh, you see a really beautiful cinematography shot at the beginning with uh, the camera going over the water and a tree. And then uh, and then the, the logo comes up, The Shining. And then uh, Danny Torrance, uh, the young kid, is uh, he's sitting in the back of the car with uh, Jack oh, and Jack Torrance, uh, the dad, you know, played by Jack Nicholson, which is his best role and his most well-known iconic role. He's driving the car forward and he's and the kid asks, you know, hey, when are we going to be there? He's like, we're almost there. And then they arrive at the hotel and um, and we're introduced to Dick Her Heron. I probably butchered the spelling of that name, but anyways, uh, he is a guy who works at the hotel, but anyways, that's not the main one. Uh, Jack Nicholson, aka Jack Torrance, he's talking to the hotel manager. He's like, don't worry, we'll, we'll be, I'll be in and out, you know, I'll check out when it's time to, and uh, we'll settle in here with my family and stuff like that. And then Jack, you know, it's nighttime, uh, Jack is starting to... Well, it's not nighttime quite yet, but uh, I thought the actor, a kid actor who played Danny, I thought he did an excellent job. One of the best kid actors I've seen in a movie. But yes, uh, you know, he starts getting these weird visions like uh, like he sees uh, like one of the examples. He sees a mirror that says uh, one of the mirror says uh, red rum, which which is murder spelled backwards. And uh, all these disturbing visions and stuff like that. Uh, but I mean, uh, yeah, there's the... Uh, uh, and then Jack Nicholson, uh, you know, there's the part at nighttime to where... Well, I know I'm going out of order here, but screw it. There's there's so much to talk about. But uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I like the how this movie's... Uh, the way it's set up. Because it's such a weird and trippy movie. But in the right way and not the wrong way. But, but yes, uh, Jack and... Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Danny and uh, his mother, you know, they go outside. Uh, well, d well, she says, oh, yeah, I keep. Anyway, so Danny's, uh, yeah, Wendy is talking to uh, the care instructor, you know, the one at the hotel, uh, the woman. She says that sometimes Jack, uh, sometimes Jack came home drunk and all this and all that, and uh abused Danny but it was by mistake and stuff like that and uh but that hasn't there hasn't been an occurrence since then and he's been uh he's been trying to lay down the drinking and stuff like that and I like the part of the movie to where uh where Wendy says to her kid uh Danny he's like why don't you want to eat he's like I just don't want to <laughs> and, and you know in the background you see a tv with the roadrunner show on I mean or something like that. It's been a while since I've seen this movie, but anyways, uh, yeah, a cartoon on it, which which was a nice little touch. I will say that. Wait, no, yeah, it was the Road Runner, but yeah, that that was a nice touch. And then uh, there's the part where it's snowing outside, and uh, and Danny and uh, Danny and uh, Wendy they're walking. They go into like this. Uh, it's really weird because like Jack Torrance, he's looking down on this table. He sees a model, a plastic model, but of this hedge maze that's exactly the one outside that they're walking in. So it's, yeah, really weird and trippy imagery, which is, but that's the reason I like this movie, because it's so different from, it's so different from your typical, not just horror film, but just film in general. Like, it's so different, which is why I really like this movie. And then, uh, you know... At, you know, Danny, his visions keep getting worse. He, you know, he sees a creepy woman at nighttime. And uh, there's the iconic scene where uh, Danny is riding his bike in the hallway. He's right, kind of like a tricycle. Well, not really a tricycle because 
It's like one of, the, you know those three-wheel bikes that little kids ride? Yeah, it's one of those. He is riding his bike in the hallway. And then he sees these two ghosts, but there are these girls and says, Danny, come play with us. But then, you know, and then after they say that, he sees their dead bodies and the entire floor covered in blood. And then they reappear again and says, come play with us forever and ever and ever. And he's so scared, he closes his eyes and everything's completely gone. He comes across a room, room 237, which, like I said, there's a documentary on it, which, you know, I still haven't seen the documentary yet. But uh, regardless, you know, he goes in out of curiosity. He he goes, he just sees it and goes in and he's creeped out and he leaves. And then Jack Torrance later on in the film, he finds it. And there's this really weird, and I mean really weird part in the movie to where there's this, uh, womp, like, kind of looks like a dead corpse of a woman in the, in the bathtub, but it's a woman who's naked and she stands out. And, you know, like I said, uh, Jack Torrance plays a dad and, you know, his behavior is just getting worse And there, because I forgot to mention there was a night where he was at the bar, but... Anyways, uh, and then he comes and he starts hugging her and stuff like that. And it like just really weird stuff. And then uh, there's the scene where eventually, you know, I like uh, I liked the actor. I liked uh, Dick Her Dick Harrelin, which was a great character in this movie because early on in the movie, like they don't list like the characters don't listen to him, but he tell he tries to tell them, you know, hey. This hotel is not a good place. You need to get your, you need to get out of here. You, know, you and your son need to get out of here. Stuff like that. Uh, but you know, they just think that he's just having really bad dreams and stuff like that. And uh, and then she is Danny's mother gets concerned when she hears him say "red rum, red rum." When uh, like he says it one morning, and she's like, uh, she's like, "Where'd you hear that from?" I don't know. Just a word I made up. And she buys into it, and then he says that the next night, and like, but she sees him holding a what, holding a large butcher knife, and she gets concerned, and she says, uh, "What, what are you thinking?" You know, stuff like that. You know, it's not safe stuff like that. And you know, the visions just keep getting scarier and worse and worse. And you know, there's many iconic scenes in the movie, like you know, there's a scene where the like all the blood pours out of a door, you know, so many other iconic sequences in this movie and stuff like that. And Wendy, uh, you know, she doesn't want to be around Jack anymore because Jack's being abusive. And, uh, and the sh the she gets to a point to where she kicks, like she, pu she pushes him down the stairs to get away from him because he's just acting so creepy and stuff like that. And, you know, like I like I mentioned, this movie takes place uh, during the winter time. So, you know, it creates some nice atmosphere. But there's a scene where Jack Torrance, this is the most well-known iconic scene of the movie. But this is the part where Jack Torrance is uh, chasing uh, his wife. Uh, she's like, Danny, come on, hurry, you know, because she locked herself in the bathroom and uh, made Danny climb out the window up. Uh, but, you know, it's snowing outside and stuff like that. And Wendy's trying to, like, even though Danny got through perfectly fine because he's small, the wife is having a hard time getting out and stuff like that. She's holding a knife uh, as a weapon for defense. But Jack says, uh, the he says, he says, come here, little piggy piggy. I'll huff and I'll puff. It'll blow your house in. And then he there's the and then he just takes an axe and he starts chopping away at the door. And then when he screams petrified at what's happening, and he keeps eventually chopping the door open. And there's the iconic scene where he sticks his face through the door. Here's Johnny. And then she gets scared. And then she cuts his hand with a knife to distract him. And you know, she gets out of there and stuff like that. And, uh, Danny and them, you know, you know, there's the part at nighttime to where they're running in, like, the hedge maze and stuff like that. And, uh, there's this weird trippy, uh, trippy imagery. But, you know, eventually Danny and the mother manage to get away. But then Jack Torrance is like, he yells Danny, stuff like that. 
And then the next morning, he's found, he's not necessarily dead, but like he's completely frozen. And I mean dead frozen, like he can't move at all, a single inch. But, but the weird part, and I love this part because it's one of those endings that really makes you think. I like the ending where you see his face, like even though he's supposed to be technically dead, you see his face in a picture from the 1920s. And this was a movie that came out in 1980, and it takes place in the 1970s. So it's like, what just happened? Like, what just happened? Like, this is such a weird ending. But yes, uh, great movie. Just, I couldn't keep it short. But yeah, uh, that was my review of my favorite horror movie, The Shining. Uh, great movie. I recommend to people who haven't seen it. And I'm going to give this movie a 10 out of 10.